I'm going to demonstrate how to use a heat gun in the chemistry laboratory. Using a heat gun is very important in some reaction because there are some specific reactions that are very moisture sensitive and after drying the glassware, if you find that there's still some moisture inside the conical flask, it may just stop all your reactions. Such reactions would include the Grignard reaction, some coupling reactions that involve nucleosin, ferrocin, and ionic solvents. So it is very important to make sure that your glasswares, especially in this case, the round bottom flask is totally dry and free of moisture. This is a Bosch hot air gun, model GHG 600-3. Here you see three settings, setting number one, two, and three. For setting one, the temperature is about 50 degrees Celsius. For setting two, it's about 400 degrees Celsius. And for three, it is 600 degrees Celsius. Setting three is too hot for our experiment. And setting one is not enough. Here you see the shrink line with the vacuum and the nitrogen. And here you see the two-way manifold. If the stock up goes up, we know that we are connecting it to the vacuum and if the blue part goes down, we are having nitrogen going in. So here, we do not allow the vacuum or nitrogen to mix together. So at any part of time, we should only allow one of these pipings, either the nitrogen or the vacuum, to be connected to our system. So you see this brown knob, this is a nitrogen source. You rotate carefully, turn it on, Make sure that the nitrogen is going in. And how do you check? You have the oil bubbler on the left hand side here. You see there's intense bubbling to show that we have nitrogen gas going into the two way manifold. So now we ensure that the whole schlank line is full of nitrogen. Okay, we stop the nitrogen for a while, we turn it off. So first of all, you're going to turn on the switch for the pump. And the outlet for the pump must be closed so that you can secure vacuum inside the schlank line. You see now the pump is connected to the system here. You see it's under vacuum. We have the two neck round bottom flask with the stirring bar inside and with one of the neck being secured with a rubber septum. And the other side, we're going to fit in with an adapter that connects to your schlank line. So make sure that the size of the joint fits the neck of the round bottom flask. Connect the adapter to the round bottom flask and make sure that all the boss head on the retort stand are tightly secure. Remember, when the glass top cup is going up, we are having a vacuum and for nitrogen is going down. On the flame drying, we will put it under the vacuum so as to remove all the substance, moisture and the solvent vapor to the vacuum. So now we turn it up to allow vacuum to be connected to the system. So now the whole system here is under vacuum. We take out the gun, the hot air gun, and we push it to the second setting. Turn on the switch for the hot air gun. And when we turn on the hot air gun, you can see that the airflow it's really, really hot, so you've got to be very careful when you handle it. Make sure that the fume hood is empty before you can do any heating. Especially, there should be no solvents inside the same fume hood. Slowly aim the barrel of the gun to the base of the RBF, to the side, and you point to the same side for some time. Do not swiftly rotate it too fast. And you move it around the round bottom flask slowly, carefully, make sure that every single part of it has been heated with the hot air gun. And be careful, do not allow any of the tubings to get into your way to be entangled. And make sure that your hot air is not blowing at any part that is not made of glass or metal. So here we need to dry Look at that. Be very careful. 
Use a master hand to hold your gun especially. You don't have to use the right hand. <laughs> I'm doing it because we have right hand as a master hand. Right? Be careful not to burn off any part of the of the sub cup. So after heating if you feel that the RBF is dry. You see you can see that there are some sparkles at the back coming from hot air in the barrel. It's really hot. I have to emphasize. Move up slightly to the neck of the round bottom flask. And you can go up a bit higher. So in this process under vacuum, the water will be turned to vapor. Any solvents will be vaporized and goes up into the shank line away from the system to the vacuum. Do it one more time to ensure that there is zero molecules of the solvent vapor inside your round bottom flask. Because we know that we are doing this for very moisture sensitive chemical reactions. We want a good you and a good result. So do not heat up the rubber septum. Be very careful. You need to heat up all parts that's made of glass. Turn around to the other side because there could be moisture residue or solvent residue at some parts of the inner glass wall. See that? Wow, it's bright. <laughs> Typically, if you have some moisture, you can see some moisture being condensed near the glass joint. So now we have the dry RBF and it's under vacuum. We need to let it cool for a few minutes and then we will refill with nitrogen gas. So after waiting for one or two minutes, we would now turn on the nitrogen gas. We try to have a steady flow of nitrogen gas inside. As you can see from an oil bubbler, a constant flow. And then now observe my right hand. Take a look at the glass top cock. So as we rotate it to the nitrogen supply, observe on the bottom left hand corner, you see that there's a transient moment where there isn't any gas in the oil bubbler. And then now it comes back again. It is because we were allowing nitrogen to go into the black tubing where it was previously vacuumed and after that it goes into the flask. So now we know that the nitrogen gas has gone into the flask which is all dry and it is an inner atmosphere. And lastly, we turn off the nitrogen source, switch the outlet of the pump and then turn off the main switch. Remember you always open the outlet of the pump first before you switch off the pump. Thank you very much. I hope you learned something from the video. Good day.